It's 61 degrees. We buy, buy, love, so be with I'm Barry Gilray, and this is Fabric of Fabric. Hallelujah. We came on a Sunday. The world, part of the Bible was back. Part of what Another part of the Bible is. I'm Barry Gilreath, your host. Welcome to Fabric of Family. Till death do us part. Oh, we've heard that cliche, but really it ought to be more than simply a cliche. It ought to be the commitment of two individuals who are entering into that special relationship, holy matrimony. However, the divorce rates that are taking place today can be staggering to consider. And seemingly, people entering into marriage do so with little understanding of what is required by God for those who take part in His holy institution. What we need today is education, communication, commitment, and an understanding of the dynamics that are created when two people decide to get married. You see, that's what Christian counseling is all about. Equipping people to be what the Lord expects them to be in all aspects of their life. In this program, we're going to examine the importance of taking advantage of premarital counseling to help ensure that you get started in your new relationship on the right foot. Do you know someone who's getting ready to say, I do? Maybe you're thinking about getting married yourself. Well, stay with us because we're going to be discussing this topic with our panel in just a moment. Heavenly sun, Thank you for viewing the Fabric sun, of Family. Flooding my soul with if you would like to receive free Bible study materials, please contact us. Our mailing address is 1031 Hermitage Drive in Florence, Alabama, 35630. Or you may contact us at our website, jhcc.org. Sun, That's jhcc.org. Flooding my soul with Or you can call us at 256 764 6291. His praise is Jesus is mine. In the That's 256 764 6291. Two mansions above. Singing his praises gladly I'm walking. Our hope and prayer is to bring you and your family closer to God. Glad that you're joining us for our panel discussion today. I have uh, two men who've been with us in uh, previous uh, programming. Uh, Drew Suttles is uh, back with us today. Drew, it's good to see you. Good to see you, brother. Uh, Drew preaches for the Gilroy uh, Church of Christ, and that's uh, in Antioch, Tennessee, uh, over in the Nashville, Tennessee area. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And then uh, sitting beside Drew, we have Dan Cates, who's preaching for the Independence Church of Christ in Independence, Mississippi, and also an instructor at the Memphis School of Preaching. Uh, Dan, it's good to have you back with us. Thank you. Good to be here. Well, good. We're talking about a good subject today. All these sure. subjects are good, of course. Okay. But this is uh, one that is, I think, especially important because uh, we do have a, a wide viewing audience on Fabric of Family. Uh, we have older folks who watch the program, but we also have younger folks as well. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, premarital counseling uh, as we get into our subject. But I want to just begin by talking about uh, counseling in general because there there are some who would uh, perhaps say, why would you even uh, talk about counseling? Is, is that even a biblical subject? Uh, they would associate counsel counselors with uh, maybe things of the world, mm -hmm. uh, worldly counsel perhaps, but, but is b counseling even biblical? What would you say? I would say it is. The, the word counselor and the word counselors combined, are, those words are used over a hundred times mm. in Scripture, wow. which tells me that those are two important concepts, and a lot of those times mm -hmm. uh, that we see those really brought out are in the books, uh, in the book of Proverbs. Mm -hmm. You also have a good bit in uh, Psalms, Ecclesiastes, but books which are very practical. You know, Proverbs is a book that you can pull out and uh, every day you can find multiple ways where this is going to help you in your dealings with your fellow man. But the idea of counsel, I would suggest, is one of the 
two or three main aspects of that book. Uh, we can think obviously about wisdom. We can think about tongues. Yeah, you know, saying the right yeah, things. Yeah. But then counsel, and especially when we get to the idea that in the multitude of counselors. Their safety. The yeah. more mm -hmm. counsel that we can get, the more we can sort of pick out. Okay, th this is a wise thing that I need to do, or that that counsel's not really that wise. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that discernment comes from just the more and more opportunities we we give ourselves to hear mm -hmm. different opinions. Uh, I'll often suggest if someone calls asking for advice, talk to somebody else too. Call yeah. several other mm -hmm. preachers. Call several other of the instructors. But one more thing I would add to that, not only do you have that emphasis in Proverbs, when we think about it, what is the Word of God? Yeah. The Word of God yeah. is counsel yeah. in and of itself on how man is to behave well, based it, upon the standard which God has given. Isn't uh, one of the descriptions of uh, God Himself uh, through His Son Absolutely. Jesus Christ, is it that uh, the word used is counselor? Yes, Absolutely. sir. Prince of Peace. Yes, sir. Uh, God. That's right. Absolutely. So, yeah, it, it is a biblical subject, but we do recognize that there are different kinds of, of counselors. There always have been. Uh, there are counselors who provide uh, good advice. Uh, point us in the right direction, then there are those who do not. And there are examples of that in Scripture, uh, as right. with um, uh, Rehoboam, mm -hmm. who did not seek wise counsel. He, yeah. he uh, got the counsel of uh, younger individuals who didn't have uh, the experience that mm -hmm. others had. As a result, it caused a lot of problems. Right. And uh, the same is true today. We, we, we need to look for good counselors when we're, we're seeking advice. What are some uh, characteristics or uh, criteria Criteria that we ought to be looking at as we choose someone to be a counselor? I would say three things that, that come to mind. If you really want to focus on how can I be more pleasing to God, how can I deal these problems, uh, deal with these problems the way God would have me to, look for someone who has great biblical knowledge. Look for someone who has experience. With that, someone who has wisdom. Um, I know you think about marriage counseling. My wife and I were privileged to sit at the feet of Steve McCaslin, longtime gospel preacher, elder, one of the elders at the Adairsville Church of Christ, my home congregation. And to sit and to have those sessions with him before we were married, just to, to sit and gain that, that wisdom from him, mm. that, that went a long way with us uh, in our first few years of marriage. So I would say look for those three things, biblical knowledge, wisdom, and experience. I would suggest... Uh, don't just look for a counselor that you know will agree with you. Yeah. Uh, counsel can be challenging. Mm -hmm. now, I'm not talking about counseling. I'm talking about receiving counsel. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you're not just uh, finding somebody who's a yes right. person. Find somebody that's going to use that standard yeah. and be willing w when you recognize there's a need to change to change. Yeah, so one of the uh, criteria that is involved in uh, benefiting from uh, counseling is that we ourselves, as the counselee, have the right attitude going in. We we want to do what's right. We're not just looking for someone to verify what we uh, want to believe or right. what, what we want to embrace, but we really want to know. So that that's an excellent point as well. Um, sometimes people are a little hesitant about seeking uh, a counselor because uh, they think, oh, if I do that, there's some stigma associated to it. It means, you know, that there's some horrible problem in my life that uh, I just can't uh, handle. Uh, what would you say to someone who suggests that? It doesn't necessarily suggest a problem exists, but it may be a preventative measure. Yeah. It might be something that will help you in the long run, but mm -hmm. Brother Case mentioned uh, from the Proverbs writer, Proverbs 1.5, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. A man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Uh, a man who wants to be wise, he'll want to listen and mm -hmm. gather that information so he can be better. Well, there are different kinds of counseling. There is uh, marriage counseling, as uh, you know, we oftentimes think of uh, a counselor. Uh, there are those who will counsel us in financial matters, uh, those who counsel in parenting. Uh, but another area that I really want us to touch on today is the area of premarital counseling. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? How important do you believe premarital counseling is um, before two people say I do? But sort of going back to the last question and, and tying that into this, the old expression, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. <laughs> 
if you can know going into marriage, you know, if, if you're entering into marriage and you're going to be scripturally married, unless either you've lost a spouse or unless you've been divorced for the exception of Matthew 19, 9, you don't know what marriage is like. You've only seen it from the outside. And so the best thing to do is to find out what marriage is going to hold for you. So premarital counseling can get into areas such as how to deal with in-laws, how to handle sharing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's no longer this is mine, that's yours. This, this is ours. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to be dealing with things such as how children are going to be raised, mm -hmm. uh, what sort of education, you know, yeah. things like that. Sometimes those need to be decided before the marriage is even entered into. I know especially uh, that's true in the religious world in general. Some religions that ones might marry a, a potential spouse, that religion says you have to educate your children this way. Mm -hmm. Well, is that something that you want, you're want? you willing to do? Of course, if, if you're very wise and very careful, you're probably going to be trying to find a spouse which is a Christian and avoiding mm -hmm. a lot of those pitfalls. But you're also going to learn about matters of intimacy. And the message that we hear in society mm. are far different than what we learn in Scripture. And some right. of that comes out in premarital counseling. Uh, and that's really the only area where you're going mm -hmm. to get a, a biblical view of that. So I think premarital counseling is vital. I know that when I uh, agree to marry someone, one of the stipulations, or a couple, mm -hmm. one of the stipulations is I'm going to counsel with you. And it's usually three sessions. I have a series of questions that I send home as homework uh, so that they can work on those separately. And we can see the common grounds. We can see their common likes. We can also uh, get in writing some of those things that they most cherish regarding the other person. Now, I ask them, you know, remind yourselves of these things often uh, when, uh, when you start to uh, begin uh, to uh, think their difficulties are rising in the marriage. Look at this sheet hmm. and see why you began to uh, want to be married. And those so are forth. some excellent ideas, um, by the way. Uh, Drew, do you... Would you tell someone, if you go through premarital counseling, that's going to guarantee you're not going to have any problems in life as far as marriage is concerned? No, no definitely no. not. Uh, I've, I've been, we, we were married, my wife Brittany and I were married in November 2014, so this will be our fifth year, Lord willing. Uh, nothing can really prepare you for it. Uh, you know you kind of have to grow together. Then, of course, when children get involved, that changes things as well. Mm -hmm. There's not a guarantee, but at least, like Brother Kate said, you'll be prepared. This is a huge decision. You know, I'd say obeying the gospel is the most important decision you make in your life. Your spouse, that's right up there, uh, oh, yeah. close number two. Because um, it's not only going to affect you, but the children that may come. You're going to affect a lot of people mm -hmm. by who you choose to marry. The Bible has a lot to say about that. It, it ultimately, uh, it may determine where you spend eternity, mm -hmm. who you decide to marry. Very, okay. very big. And you want to find somebody that's going to help you get to heaven. That needs to be your number one quality. Uh, but I believe it, it's not a guarantee, but it will definitely help you to be prepared. Well, all right. Drew, Dan, we're going to take a break now and watch a short segment, A Word for the Family, and then we're going to come back and we're going to wrap up our discussion today. Sir. In Albuquerque, New Mexico, there is a company called Freedom Rings where couples can bring their old wedding ring and they can smash it with a sledgehammer representing their divorce. And I want to tell you that divorce is plaguing our society. It is literally the hammer on our society today. It is destroying families. My family was destroyed because of divorce. And I want to tell you today, it, it affects me even today. Even though I was a child, my parents were divorced, it still affects me today. And I promise you, it affects everyone's family and it affects every person in that family. I want to talk about divorce for a minute today. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 9, Jesus said, Whosoever therefore shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and marries another, commits adultery. And whosoever therefore marries her that is put away doth commit adultery. I want to give you three things about this sad, sad thing that we talk about divorce. Number one, the realm of application. It does not just apply to God's chosen people. He said, whosoever therefore shall put away his wife. That means everyone. 
You know, some people try to teach that, you know, a person who lives outside in the world can live any way they want to, and they can be divorced however many times, and then they can be in an unscriptural marriage, and then they decide to obey the gospel. You know, they don't have to leave the marriage because, you know, that only applies to people in the church. No, Jesus is speaking to everyone. And he said, it doesn't matter if you're in the church or out of the church, if you're a follower of God or not. He said, whosoever puts away his wife, except it be for fornication, and marries another, is committing adultery. The realm of application goes very far. This is a big problem among uh, people today. Number two, let's talk about the reason announced. The reason announced is fornication. He said, except it be for fornication. I understand that if a man abuses his wife, it's a dangerous thing. I do not think that a woman should stay in that situation. I believe that the children and the wife should even call the police. That They need to leave that situation. But as far as divorcing and remarrying, that is not grounds for divorce and remarry. The only biblical grounds for divorce and remarry, he said, is except it be for fornication. Does she need to stay away from that man? Yes, if he is abusing her, she needs to stay away from him. But that does not mean that she can remarry. She will have to remain single unless this man becomes unfaithful to her and then she can put him away. The Bible says the realm of application applies to everyone. The reason announced is for fornication. And number three and finally... The restriction that is applied, he said, also, whosoever marries her which is put away doth commit adultery. So you have some positives and negatives there, like, you know, you got different sides to this. The guilty party can never remarry scripturally again. But the good news is, and this is why Jesus is teaching this, the good news is, there is a scriptural time to divorce. But there's only one. If your spouse is unfaithful to you because of fornication, you would be free to remarry. But the guilty party is never free to remarry. Well, today, I want to urge you to become a Christian to save your marriage and to save your soul. What I have learned is that Christians have the best marriages. And love is the greatest principle of all. You remember, now by its faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. If you begin to love like God wants you to love, I promise you can avoid divorce. But God is the only one who can fix your marriage. And I hope today that you will fix it before it's too late. Today, think about how you can improve and meet the needs of your spouse. Too many times people do not prepare ahead of time. And they enter into marriage and they're not ready. I want to encourage you to do something that me and my wife did before we got married. And that is, we went to marriage counseling before we got married. Now, our marriage is not perfect. It never has been. But I want to tell you today, I believe those principles that we learned ahead of time have saved us so many times. Because times are going to be hard. And we have had hard times. But we were able to use those tools that were given to us early on. And I want to encourage you to do the same. We need to prepare before people get divorced. I hope this helps. Thank you. Well, we're wrapping up our discussion today on uh, the importance of counseling, particularly premarital counseling in today's program. I want to just kind of explore some of the areas that uh, one would expect to be brought up during uh, premarital counseling, some uh, kind of some broad areas that are kind of common when premarital counseling is done. Um, Drew, what, what's an area that comes to your mind? One that comes to mind is uh, family traditions. Okay, what are family traditions? <laughs> you may not you may not think it's that big of a deal, but when it comes time for holidays, okay. where are we going this year? Mm -hmm. um, you know, there needs to be a compromise between the husband and wife. Hey, let's go to your family this yeah. year, our family next year, because that that can cause a lot of problems, a lot of tension, especially if you move far away from your family Absolutely. as a young couple. And the reason we, we, we talk about these things in premarital counseling is not because um, necessarily um, these are areas that... 
people don't have information about. It's just that for some couples, if they've not talked about this in advance, yeah. it can become a hardship in their marriage relationship. Something as simple as, well, where are we going to go this year for Thanksgiving? Right. Uh, you know, the husband assumes, well, we'll be at mom's. <laughs> we, we're, I've always been at mom's, you know, <laughs> right. ever yeah. since I was a little boy. And, you know, the, 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 the lady in the relationship, uh, she says, well, you know, uh, we're going to be at grandmother's, my grandmother's, because all of my family always eats at grand. So th these things can come up and, and can cause problems. So we just kind of go through this and, uh, you know, how, what would you do? How are you going to handle this situation as people are contemplating uh, marriage? Uh, Dan, what's another area? Well, uh, before we get to another area, I might suggest that it wouldn't be bad for in-laws to have premarital counseling <laughs> as well <laughs> so that they're not expecting the children yeah. to be at my house. Realize yeah. that you're son-in-law may want to have the family at his yeah. family's house. Um, I would suggest that areas such as finances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, today, you know, a lot of homes are relying upon both spouses working because mm -hmm. of the financial situation. Sometimes maybe at least one of the spouses has multiple jobs. In this day and age, finances which have always been an issue, they've become so vitally important. To go ahead and have an understanding beforehand of you know what's going to be important budget-wise, and I would suggest first and foremost in that is what are we going to give to the Lord? Mm -hmm. uh, so what's our obligation there? Now, what are we going to spend on housing? What are we going to spend on transportation? Mm -hmm. Things of that nature. If we can solve a lot of that, at least even in, in the general sense in premarital counseling, that's going to cause a lot of those things that hamper communication sure. later. People don't want to talk about money, especially when the bills start coming mm -hmm. in. That's difficult. So you kind of work through this in advance. That's right. Uh, you know, another area that uh, comes to mind I always like to bring up is uh, spiritual union. Uh, and by that I mean uh, we're on the same page religiously because if we're not, uh, that can be a very sensitive area. Uh, you know, as uh, we come together as husband and wife and decide, well, where are we going to go to church today? You know, and people have different assumptions. Well, I just assumed we would be here. Or I assumed we would be there. And then you got children that are going to come along as well, and That's right. and uh, they're kind of going to be torn between mo the mother and the father. And so, yeah. um, I think uh, religious unity is, is an area that is always good to discuss in premarital uh, counseling. Uh, wh what about? Um, do you men ever um, talk to um, to those that you counsel about uh, what the Bible teaches in Matthew 19 and 9 as a couple is considering marrying, uh, and that being... Uh, Jesus said, Whosoever putteth away his wife, except it be for fornication, and marries another, committeth adultery. And whosoever marries her that has been put away, commits adultery. Do you think that's something that we ought to just initiate and bring up? Or do we not talk about it unless it's brought up? I believe you, you must initiate it. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. absolutely important. Because if you let that slide by, and then it comes time for the marriage, and now what are you doing? Well, now two people are being joined. They might not have the scriptural right to do that. Um, recently had a friend reach out to me thinking about marrying someone. Uh, he's never been married, but she has before. He's get, and, and she's divorced, and it's not for a scriptural reason. And he asked me to be honest with him. I took him to Matthew 19, 9. And I said, that word whosoever is important. This applies to everyone who's going to be involved in this. And then the end of the passage that you mentioned, whosoever marrieth her, he commits adultery. So I said, you'll be in danger of doing that. And so now you go from being single, never been married, now you're in this situation, you have to think about that because, again, your soul depends on it. Mm. Well, that's certainly true. And uh, so I, I, I also uh, think it's important to, to talk about that. Make sure that the two who want to enter into this relationship are eligible to do so in the eyes of God. If, right. they're, if they're not, I'm not going to uh, personally uh, want to participate in that ceremony because I'd have a conscience problem with that. Right. But it is good. They need to know. And they may yes. not have ever considered it. Exactly. They may, you know, and uh, be thankful that, that we actually took time to so address that. Yes. You know, in disturbing. the church, we want to be helpful. Uh, uh, in any way we can in, in people's lives. And um, what are the benefits of a church being proactive in this area that we're talking about? What are some of the benefits you see? Uh, I think that elders especially 
need to recognize the benefit that their young people will have if their young people are, are not only willing to approach the preacher who's going to be performing the, the ceremony and the preacher's not only willing to, but they are proactive in making sure that it happens. Mm -hmm. you know, th this is something that you need before you get married. You need to talk to, to the preacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes, you know, it may be the situation that the preacher's family or is very close. It may be good to for the elders to say, you know, brother so and so at this other congregation, you can talk to him. Mm -hmm. He can he can counsel you. Uh, the situation with my daughter when she was getting married, I didn't want to be the <laughs> counselor. Mm -hmm. Well, she went yeah. to yeah. one of the local congregations. One of uh, my former students did the counseling, and they were, they were benefited by it. But I think elders need to encourage it. Congregations, parents need to encourage it as well. Yeah. And plus, the members need an open door. They need to know that they have somebody they can trust in and, and confide in and talk to because they may be reluctant to talk. But if an elder comes up to them or the preacher says, hey, my door's open for you, if you need that help, to provide that for them. Yeah, and I, I just in closing, want to want to emphasize that even though we're talking about premarital counseling specifically today, uh, once the ceremony is over, it, it's good to get a refresher uh, <laughs> uh, times of counseling, um, marriage enrichment seminars, perhaps we could attend, or or extra study in the Word of God regarding marriage. I want to thank you, gentlemen, for being with us today. Thank you, brother. Heavenly song. Thank you for viewing the fabric of family. Flooding my soul. If you would like to receive free Bible study materials, please contact us. Our mailing address is 1031 Hermitage Drive in Florence, Alabama, 35630. Or you may contact us at our website, jhcc.org. That's jhcc.org. Or you can call us at 256-764-6291. That's 256-764-6291. mansions above, singing his praises, gladly I'm walking. Our hope and prayer is to bring you and your family closer to God. Well, that's all the time that we have for Fabric of Family today. But I want to close today by making mention of a particular individual who has been so helpful and influential in many good works over the years. Recently, Fabric of Family lost a dear friend and supporter of good works. His name was Ricky Rich. And he was a member of the Jackson Heights Church of Christ in Florence, Alabama. He served there as a deacon over the mission committee. And I know that Ricky was also involved in other boards and efforts promoting good works in the kingdom of God. He was a big supporter of this program and uh, various mission works in which he was involved with. He leaves behind a loving wife, Barbara, a mother, a daughter, a son-in-law, and a grandbaby. His influence and activities in mission efforts far and abroad will certainly be missed. He was a kind-hearted and generous man for whom I was thankful to call a friend. Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Selected. Focus. Volume. Selected. Focus. Selected. Screen recording.